Do you know how to use volume in your trades? Welcome everyone to Trades of the World, our new interview show where we bring inspiring stories about the financial market and incredible guests. Hello world, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be around the world. I'm Professor Flavio Lemo, Chairman of the Brazilian Local Chapter of the CBT Association, also author of some investment books, and we are speaking English because we want to show inspire new traders around the world. I hope you all like it and subscribe to our channel. Okay, I'm certain that we will have an amazing conversation with our special guest. Speaking of our guest today, I'm honored that he has written my bestseller book for World. And he has made several presentations all over the world, including in our Expo Trader Brazil in 2007. Also, in 2007, his technical research was awarded the prestigious Charles H. Dow Award. Also, he is an awarding winning author. His book, Investing with Volume Analysis, is the only book to win both the Traders Planet Star Award for Top Book Reserves, as voted on by end users and the International Prestigious Technical Analysts Book of the Year Award as peer reviewed and voted upon by top industry experts. Also, he is the developer of volume weight moving average, the VWNAACD, the volume price confirmation indicator, the VPCI, VPCI stochastics, the anti-volume stop losses, the trend trust indicator, capital weight volume index, as well as host of cap weight volume based breath indicators. His work with the market indicators and trading systems design has been published and referenced in Barron's Stock and Commodities, CDBC, the Financial Times, and active trade magazines, as well as the FTA and MTA journals. So guys, let's turn up the volume. He is almost, he is a foremost expert in the field of volume analysis founder of volumeanalysis.com and chief technical analyst of King, Kingsview Asset Management. He has over 20 years experience directly managing private investment portfolios for affluent individuals, institutions, trusts, endowments, and financial advisors. In June, in June of 2022, his volume factor risk overlay was named winner of the technical analysis 2022 Best Special Product Research Award. He was also named the to Fork 2023 Best in State Wealth Advisors list. And now he has just launched a new book. So please welcome my friend, Buff Peltz Dormaya. Hey, thank you for that introduction, Flavio. Great to see you again. Okay. Thank you so much for being here, Buff. So, Buff, tell us about your beginning as an analyst. What did you study? What did you work? How was the beginning? Well, I actually started as a uh, re re retail uh, advisor, and we had this thing called a squat box that sat in the corner, and it'd tell us, you know, that the analyst would come on and tell us what you know, stock stories, and then we'd try to take those stock stories and and take them to the to the clientele to buy. The problem was is that a lot of these, most of these ideas, they sat cold, they didn't move. And so those stocks weren't moving. Fortunately, there was one person that came on that squawk box and his stocks seemed to always move. And he did something that the other analysts never did is that when the, when the stocks, uh, when the stocks weren't working, he'd say, hey, fold it, it's time to fold them, time to move on, let's find something that is working. And so I was just fascinated. But that this person could always find stocks that are moving because that's what I needed. <laughs> I needed stocks that were going up. And so I one day I was like, I just called him up. I said, how are you doing this? And he just told me he was a technician, gave me some uh, books to read, referred me to the uh, the MTA at the time, which is now the CMT Association. And and uh, that's, that's how I got into the technical analysis journey. 
And so as I, as I developed um, my skills, I, one area I found that um, was volume and what I, everything I've read said that, you know, volume led price and volume was all simultaneously provide reliability. I, I thought to myself, why isn't everybody using volume then? If I can get in a trade quicker and have a higher probability of it being, a, being in the position correctly, why aren't I using it? And so that's how I got into specifically the, the volume analysis. Okay. Before we enter into technical stuff, you also have told me a funny story about firing your father. Could you mm -hmm. share with the audience? Sorry. Yeah. So my, so my, uh, like, like you, Flavio, my, my father, uh, works for me and, you know, he, he does, he does a great job of what he, what he does. Um, uh, but, you know, I'm kind of greedy, you know, I, I don't want to pay him the big bucks, you know, it's just kind of a side job for him. And uh, the the uh, human resources compliance person called me and says, hey, you're not paying your dad enough money. I said, okay, he's fired. <laughs> and then I hung up. <laughs> well, a few minutes later, the, the compliance person called me back. <laughs> My dad was in the room and he was stunned. <laughs> but after a few minutes of silence, we both just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad ended up getting a raise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about serious things now. <laughs> In your book, Investing with Volume Analysis, you said that most investors assume fundamental analysis preceded technical analysis. Do you think it is it true? That would be false. Yeah, so the if you go back into the, the history of the markets, um, unlike today where we have high regulations, back then there was no regulations. And so basically all the information was contained by key individuals that, that had that information. And so as opposed to looking at uh, access to balance sheets and income statements and, and all those, those materials, they, they were largely closely held. And so because you didn't have that information, what you did was is that you watched the people that had that information. So people watched the technicals because they were watching the smart money and what they were doing. And that was uh, what that was the way to invest. You know, then in the 1930s, regulation came about and made all this information public so that everyone can get it. And so uh, so prior to the 1930s, technical analysis was pretty much the game in town. and uh, 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 Charles Dow was the, was pretty much the pioneer of getting that information out to the public. And you said in an interview, volume is the force and the fuel of the market. But why a trader needs to use volume information? I call these the four R's. So volume is responsive. Volume leads price. That, that simply means that generally before a big stock move you see the volume uh change you generally before an up move you'll see big volume starting to to build into before a big uh uh trend emerges so you'll see the volume come in first so volume leads price and as volume comes in and as that is that trend moves uh let's say it's moving higher more and more people confirm that price Meaning as the stock moves higher, more and more people coming in or is telling you that people are willing to participate in that stock at ever increasing prices. The, that is basically the fuel or, as you said, Flavio, the force that allows the market to continue to go higher. People with money is the fuel. That fuel is measured in volume. And so if if the volume is confirming the price, not only did you get into the movement quicker because volume volume triggered first, now you have a more probability of, of having a being in a successful uh, trade because that volume is confirming what's happening. And if you can get into a trade sooner and have a, high, a higher probability of being more reliable, you can uh, re reduce your risk because you're less likely to be in a false breakout or a false trend or momentum that that doesn't have any fuel to substantiate it so you can reduce your risk and you can in, increase returns 
because that that volume is giving you a higher probability uh, of success and also gener generally generating a greater force to propel those prices higher. I have interviewed recently Dave Keller, and he said that he does not use volume anymore because of the high frequency traders, dark pools, and hedge funds. But he still use the Shaikin money flow and the OBV. But what do you think about it? The this not using volume information because frequent traders, dark pools, and hedge funds. Well, we are we're talking about individual stocks. There, you know, there's 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 dark and there's closed markets. But when it comes, and that generally has to do with price. But when it comes to price. And, and volume, those markets are all lit, meaning that when when someone makes a trade, whether it's in a quote dark pool or not, that that information has to be recorded very quickly within that with you know with you know with, generally within seconds, and so it doesn't really matter whether it comes from a dark pool or not. It's really irrelevant um, to to individual stocks now. The high frequency trading, basically, that's just you know replacing the, the what used to be the, the the specialists and and now the and the and the market makers, and so the high frequency trading really um, what 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 they're doing is they're they're providing depth in, in the market right now, and so the only volume that we look at is is on actual trades. So for in order for a trade to happen, somebody that wants to buy has to meet somebody that wants to sell. And when those two parties come together, that creates price and it's sibling volume. Price is what they, the price they agreed on and the volume. So it doesn't matter where it came from. All that matters is that it's happening. And so volume, it, whether it comes from uh, a dark pool or 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 a high frequency trader has no has, has doesn't have any significance to what whatsoever on individual stocks. However, what has happened in indexing is I think it's more of a more it's you know dark pools, high frequency trading. These these are just mechanisms. But the real what the real change in the marketplace was decimalization. So we went from fractions to decimalization. And that changed um, the that made volume start to rapidly accelerate. So if you're comparing volume and say uh, uh, the volume has grown be because of decimalization and and high frequency trading and dark pools are just tools uh, that are usually are made in, in in between markets. Okay? And so it really doesn't have any impact. But what you do have seen is that volume has increased. And and the volume on, on indexes is, is has never been was never really good or accurate. So um, meaning because volume was always tallied, and so because volume is tallied, um, when you look at price and volume, is what really matters is the relationship between these two. Okay, and. With a price index, it's generally cap weighted, like the S and P 500 is capital weighted. We see that now with like the Magnificent Seven generating, you know, 20, 25 percent of all the movement of 500 stocks is cap weighted. But if you look at the volume totals, you know, you you really can't find. It's very difficult to find true S and P 500 volume. You might find the New York Stock Exchange or the Nasdaq volume, but you're not. It's really difficult to find the S and P. But even if you were to find the S&P 500 volume, that those stocks, that, that volume is a tally of all the volume that happened between those 500 stocks. And what's driving that volume, those debt volume tallies, is, is the small stocks okay, that are low priced. Those have higher volume than the big stocks that, that are, have high prices. The penny stocks, I mean. Yeah, the, 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 it's, 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 the, it's the penny stocks. That are that are driving the tallies. So in that re in that regard, if you're looking at traditional volume, and with indexes, I would agree that that data is just about worthless because it doesn't relate to the price, and um, and it's is understating the those big 
cap weighted moves where all the money's at and overstating the small stocks where very little money is at. That's why we created the cap weighted volume to repair all that. Okay. So tell us about your new book, The Volume Factor. So before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about my old book, Investing with Volume Analysis. Okay. Okay, so when I wrote that book, that was really targeted towards um, analysts like like you, Flavio, that really understand the, the depths of the market. And the idea was is that volume is a, can be used as an indicator to create an edge, an edge to your to your portfolio management, an edge to your trading because volume leads price, volume confirms price, and these produces less risk and and more more returns so I, I go in depth in in the in the book about explaining why volume you know the you know, why volume is is important and how you how you can use some of these indicators to get these these results the second book is 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 it is kind of a build upon that idea but it's really for people that are more investment savvy, um, financial advisors, it's not for the, the analysts because what we're doing is we're saying volume really isn't just an indicator. Volume is an investment factor. So what is an investment factor? A factor is, is, is a characteristic or a trait of a stock. And um, through um, various, um, institutions and publications uh, a lot of the, the a lot of it being the fama french model they have proven that there are certain characteristics that stocks that that certain stocks have that tend to outperform the market uh, those would in, include technical factors like volatility low volatility outperforms high volatility momentum um, also some fundamental factors like quality um, and um, value those those are some of the the traditional uh, factors okay and you can and the, but the problem with these factors is that they come in and out of favor so what I've proven in, in what I basically the thesis of the book is that volume is not just a, a, a data set volume is not just a, a stellar, indicator that provides an edge volume is a factor but not only a factor it's the it's the factor that rules them all because when you understand where capital is moving you not only know you not only not what stocks to invest in what markets to be in or out of but also which of these factors are in vogue so that you can position your portfolio in those areas that are that are currently garnering capital and the results of this is that we can create uh, investment uh, goals based investment strategies to lead to successful financial outcomes so this volume factor is the missing piece to for financial planners to build a portfolio that actually accomplishes their their financial goals which are to reduce volatility and and create income for for their for their uh, investors. Will you show us uh, the the book cover? Sure. And also, is it on sale right now or is a pre launch? So, so book dot volumefactor dot com slash pre order is where you can get the the pre order information. So. You can go to that link and just sign an indication of interest that you're, you want information on the book. And you're, it's not a, a buying. You're not buying the book. You're just putting an indication of interest. And with that, when you do that, you will also get information. Uh, you'll get my weekly volume analysis of flash updates and volume analysis commentary. So you, you can get both in one shot. So you get the free volume analysis um, commentary plus um the uh plus the information on the book when it's when it's released and you may even get information on the up i got two flavio i don't know if i told you this but i got two etfs coming up oh no that are going to be listed uh on december 18th 
Um, M. Questions. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I think I got a slide on that right here. The volume factor global unconstrained, which is a growth portfolio, and M and volume factor dividend tree, which is a which is a uh, dividend growth strategy. Oh, gay. Great, that's great news, huh? It's the first of the two, the first first ETFs like this. So these would be the very first two volume ETFs, with volume being the catalyst or the portfolio driver for the for the strategies. And so let me just explain kind of what the strategies are. So the strategies are made up of three components. Okay, first, so the so so um, the strategy is made of, of three components. Okay, first the first main components is everybody that follows sports knows that defense is what creates championships. So what we have in is in, in our in in our um, volume factor strategies is is we have to we we have a championship defense made up of of a risk overlay that tracks capital flows so one of my innovations was capital weighted volume and capital weighted dollar volume okay i actually created this in the in the early mid 2000s and the i had two problems one is i didn't have a software i couldn't find a software program that could get it programmed uh efficiently and then once I did, because computers were a lot slower back then, I couldn't compute the data to track how much money was moving into the stock market. Even though I had the formula, it took too long. It, it took like 20 hours to from one <laughs> to figure out how much money moved into the market, how much money moved out of the market, and how, what was the net. Now, with computers today, literally that same computation takes a, a second. So that's how much computers have, have, have evolved. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm, un, I'm following the flow of capital. And the flow of capital is, is um, tr trending uh, higher and above trend. We are long the market. However, when the, uh, the, when the um, trend of capital turns negative, that's when we exit the market to preserve capital. Now, the goal the goal here isn't necessarily to um, it, to avoid daily fluctuations or even this most recent correction we we had in the third quarter. What it's designed to do is to save the big money, like 2022, to avoid that bear market. So, like last year, we sidestepped. The majority of, of the bear market because why because capital was moving out when capital trends turned uh turned down we, we exited okay so that is the first piece of our of our portfolio is having a really good defense now the problem with good defenses well first of all very few portfolio managers uh very few investors employ defense Okay, risk management is something that's that's really under underused under under, um, especially in, by professionals. Um, the, you know, and financial planners would say, "Hey, you just got to write it out." Um, and, you know, writing it out isn't fun. And and when you're taking money out, and most wealth right now is in the distribution phase. I mean, people are have, re, have retired; they need their portfolio to live off of. You know, if you're doing that. And the market's going down. It's you're you know you're really really hurting yourself. So you have to have a good defense to keep those losses low, to keep the volatility going, and that will keep you in the ball game. Okay. Now, of those strategies that do employ defense, they they have all they all have a common problem, is that they don't understand how to re-engage or transition from defense back to offense. So they so maybe they, they go defensive, but by the time they get back on the their offense on the field, the big moves already happened because the biggest growth of the of the market is generally 
in the birth of a new bull market. So when the bull market arrives, it, it arrives in a fury and you see these big gains you know, some in, in, in a few weeks, sometimes even a few days. These are your big moves of the, of, the, of the bull market. So what we use is we use volume as a, uh, as a, as a tool, specifically the asymmetry between volume and price as a gauge of when to get back in. So let me give you, uh, Flavio, do you know anyone that's always right? My wife. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. That is the right answer. She, the, the, your spouse, if is your wife is always, always right. Okay. So other than your wife, do you know anybody else that's always right? <laughs> Go no, Ma Marianne is always right, but <laughs> you don't know anybody else. God, but, God. But, 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 the, market, but you, the market's always right. The, market. the market's always right. Well, of course, of course, the market. Okay. Now, but you, you work with a lot of different people. I'm sure you know some people that are always doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Is it, oh, you, you, yeah, you, do, yeah you, you probably know several of those people. Well, there's a, there's a symbol that represents these people. And that symbol is SPY. That is the S&P 500 ETF. And what this is, is this is – it. From price wise, the ETF moves just like the price, dollar to dollar, point to point. They they move exactly in tandem. However, what this ETF is made of, up of is these people that are always doing the wrong thing at the wrong time, and that's retail investors. So retail investors are buying this spider, and so what I'm looking at is not the price movement so much, but the volume, and what happens. During a bear market, particularly uh, as as it peaks out, the volume as the price drops will spike and it'll get super super high, and that's what I'm looking for. That is the setup for uh, for the capitulation signal. And so what I'm looking at, if you if you can see my chart here, this is the mother of all bottoms, March 2009. And I was very fortunate to buy the this this spider, even some of my trades right on the very very low. That was how I got it on the daily low. That was that was just working my trades throughout the day. But the reason I bought on that day was because I got the VPCI V bottom. And what the VPCI V bottom is specifically doing is it's looking for a catalyst of this volume surging, but then ever so slightly. There's fewer and fewer people willing to sell. And what does that tell you? It tells you all the greedy people that be suddenly became fearful have already sold out. And now is the time to come back in when, when these people have all capitulated, okay? Doing the wrong thing at precisely the wrong time. So when you get that indication is, is by measuring the volume relative to the price movement, through the volume price confirmation indicator, that gives you the signal it's time to come back in because they're, now the market's capitulating. Uh, another example here is in uh, the, the S&P 500 during the pandemic. Um, we got the signal um, on the 19th of March, the VPCIV bottom, which is, was two days prior to the actual, to the actual low. And so, that's what we're that is the that is the essence of what we're trying to to um, achieve here. Have a great defense and then get back on special teams. And then finally is the offense. So the last piece is is the offense. And what we're doing with the, with the with 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 the offense and what we explain in our strategies in the books, we're combining a couple different factors. We're com we're combining momentum. We're combining trend versus a volume weighted trend that's the vpci and then we're combining uh mo momentum contrasted to vo price volume momentum okay and so by investing in stocks 
that have that that shows good strong asymmetry between their momentum and their and and their price or excuse me their volume momentum uh, this is here the first decile stocks this right here is the index you see that that is provided a much greater return and when you combine them all together you you can get extraordinary returns so you you show the vpci that you want the Charles Dow or could you talk about it and other indicators how many indicators have you developed could you talk about them yeah so the, the, the what makes the volume price confirmation indicator unique is that most volume indicators are are looking at uh, data sets that have to do with how much did the stock move today how much volume did you have today and it's looking at that on a on a daily or weekly or whatever kind of time frame that, that you're set up with what we're looking at different what sets the VPCI apart is that volume analysis is most useful it's not saying it isn't useful in daily and weekly charts it is extremely useful but it, where you get the most value is in the trends the longer term movements so what we're doing is we're contrasting a, a trend say a, a, a trend of um a, of a stock versus how much of that trend is it is attributed to actual money flowing in or out okay and that has to do with price and volume together. And so what we're looking at is the asymmetry. It is volume confirming the price trend? Or is it lack of volume contradicting a price trend? So if think about the market as like an airplane. Okay. If you're flying an airplane and you want the plane to go higher, you're going to change the trajectory. But if that's all you do, that plane is going to crash because in order for that plane to go higher, it needs also increased fuel or thrust. And volume is that fuel and that thrust of the market. More and more people willing to participate at ever increasing prices. That's the fuel. More money moving in. Okay. So if the trend is moving higher and fewer and fewer people are participating, that's telling you that that plane or the market is is subject to it to its to a stall okay similarly if the let's just take the inverse now the market's moving down and fewer and fewer people are willing to sell well that's telling you just kind of like we looked at the vpci that 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 the market's in in a, a state of apathy fewer people are willing to sell at these ever depressed prices and is poised to move itself back up so that's how we use the volume price confirmation indicator, but but there are but there are many indicators that, that that I have developed. That is very unique. The newest one I have is is the volume confirmation momentum indicator. Okay, that has even produced more stellar results than the volume price confirmation indicator because it's not looking at just a price trend; it's actually looking at the momentum. And similarly, is the momentum sustained through volume? So that's just simply looking at the like the RSI, the relative strength indicate index, and then comparing it to like the MFI, which is the uh, volume adjusted relative strength in index. So if you take the difference between those two, you can see that it is the volume momentum supporting the 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 price momentum or not and those areas of large asymmetry those give those have have i've found those give you just absolutely phenomenal uh results so the market is people in action acting like people so what's your personal trading routine do you have a checklist with tools to use so the first thing I like to do is I, I first and foremost is I want to know what the broad markets are doing. So that's that's my first first thing. So if if I'm in a bull market, then you know then it opens up the the, the game for lots of different things. But if we're in a bear market, 
you know, then I'm going to be, then it's going to close the gates on doing lots of different strategies. And so if we're in a, say, if we're in a bear market, maybe there's a few sectors. So then I'll look in those sectors. Where is there, where is, where are we seeing in the sectors that there's maybe defying the trend of the broad market? Okay. And if it's a bull market, um, which of these sectors, these areas are garnering the best place to be? This could also go beyond that into factors like is dividends in vogue right now? Um, is quality in vogue right right now? What kind? What's what traits that stocks have uh, are are in vogue right now? Or styles like growth or value, um, size or the small ones, the the big ones, the mid ones. Which ones are which ones are garnering the most capital? So once I have that, then I can then I can kind of no, narrow down. And when I see certain stocks, I know okay, here's a stock that looks really attractive. But also, its sector looks attractive, and the market looks attractive. So, if I got all three going, then then that puts me in a good position. But with that said, Flavio, most everything I'm doing right now is algorithmic. I found that I my own mind gets in the way, my own emotions get in the way. So every most um, most of the strategies I run professionally, I've looked at. I just they are just strictly data dependent. They, they, I've, they, I've trained these, these systems on how to um, interpret the market, just like I would interpret the market through and looking at, at these factors of, of multi factors and putting them together and how do they work together. And those, those algorithms, um, I, you know, are, are better than what I could ever be. AI. At the, at this bad so I, I don't use any artificial intelligence. The the, 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 the the greatest IA in the world is the stock market. Okay? And what I'm trying to do is I'm not, Buff Dormeyer is a person with limited mind, limited resources. But what I figured out is how do I find what the, what the big money is doing? The big money has can hire the best, smartest minds. They can buy the best resources. They can invest in the best research. And these people are the drivers of where that capital is going. So what I'm not, I'm not trying to outsmart these guys. I'm trying to follow the tracks that they're laying. And because I'm driving a speedboat and these guys are, are driving a big uh, tanker ship out in the ocean, I can move much more quicker and nimbly than, than they can. I can see the directions and that they're going. I can beat them to the spot. And so that is my advantage is that I'm, I'm small, I'm nimble, but I know what they're doing. This, this question we always ask it to anybody. What were your best and worst traits and what have you learned with them? So I, I think... You, the worst, the okay, the best of the worst. The worst, the worst mistakes. I can't think of any 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 names in mind specifically, but okay. I'll tell you my worst mistakes is not realizing it. That is my worst mistake is having a stock that I think I know more than the market is not acting correctly, and I'm going down. Uh, here, here, I give you one. Um, big five. Big five uh, is a stock that um, pays a really good dividend, has really strong free cash flow, um, was 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 a growing stock, growing its earnings, and it's cheap and like five times earnings. So it's cheap. It pays a really strong dividend. It's high quality. It's growing its cash flow. Everything looks good at it, right? But that was true at $20 and it's now true at five. Okay. So my mis biggest mistake is not realizing that that mistake earlier. Okay. And so that's why it's so important to, and, and to have uh, a stop loss. And so one of my indicators that I use is I call the anti-volume stop loss. And what it does is it adjusts a, a stop loss based on the price volume relationship. So if the price volume relationship is strong, I'm going to drop that that stop that loss lower be, 
that's going to prevent me from getting whipsawed off, uh, out of out of kind of wild fluctuations. But if that but if that relationship is weak, then I'm going to raise that stop and I'm going to get out of that stock sooner. Should the should the momentum uh, or trend uh, falter? Um, as 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 far as um, my best things, what one of the things I, I've just kind of already explained. One of the best things that that I've been just very blessed and fortunate to to be able to do is find these bottoms. You know, these VPCI view bottoms. People say you can't time the market, but I've been very good at gauging the market through these VPCI view bottoms, and we've been very accurate. Uh, not a hundred percent, but very but but statistics that people would say is impossible to to uh you know to time so we've been by gauging the market looking at this data i've been very successful in in finding these these uh bottoming points does it work better on daily or could you use in a intraday chart on the vpcib bottoms yes i i, I use daily but but it, that's going to get you the quicker signal the the weekly can I, I sometimes use the weekly to confirm the the daily, but 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 if you're going to get it to the day, you need to be daily. And I try to, you know, those signals usually, if they're the good signals, usually happen within the week of the bottom. So, uh, but for where the audience could you follow your work on social media, and also could you suggest some good books as well as yours? Uh, some other other good books. Yes, um, or your Twitter or whatever you use. Yeah, so um, one of the books that I, I really like, it's not a technical book, and one that you probably, you haven't heard people bring up, is I really like Quantitative Strategies for Achieving Alpha. That's by Richard Tortillo. Um, and what he does, um, he's a, this guy's an, a, a researcher, for the S and P, he, and he he's their researcher of like I think their their index products, and he tests uh, thousands of different uh, of, of different um, of factors or indicators for the markets. Most of them are, are economic and fundamental, but there's a few technical. And um, in one of the indicators that tests really really well, a matter of fact, the strongest. Of thousands of of indicator of of uh, of uh, indicators and and data sets that he tested was the relative strength index. Uh, momentum is is a is one of the factors that uh, really show up strong in his work. Okay, what's your website again? So okay, so uh, my name buffdormeyer.com is my main website. Okay. My website for my new book is volumefactor.com and my old book is volumeanalysis.com. So buffdormeyer.com is kind of like the centerpiece. Volumefactor.com is the is specifically for the, the new book and volumeanalysis.com is is for the old book. We will place everything in the in the description of the of the, the video. So but What's your final advice would you give to younger traders? So remember this, volume is the force. And just, just as Yoda went on an important mission and said, may the force be with you, may the force be with you and never leave your chart without it. Dr. Maya, this has been an honor and a pleasure. Your technical expertise paired with a genuine desire to work in the best interest of your clients makes you a standout among our peers. We want to thank you, all of you, our viewers, for joining us on this journey today. So, your final words, Buff. Hey, th hey thanks for having me on. Great luck. Good luck with, uh, with, the, with the podcast. Okay. And we come to the end of this amazing interview with Bafta Maya. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you on the next interview. Bye-bye.